if you're going to be traveling soon but you feel very overwhelmed and very confused with the whole process then you'll definitely want to watch this whole video let's go over some tips and hacks that are going to make your next vacation a lot simpler and less stressful the first tip that i have for you is to make a list of everything that you need this list can be on a small notebook like this one or you could put it on your notes on your phone and this is very important to do because there are so many things that you have to keep track of you have to think about your budget you have to think about everything that you're going to be packing and then your itinerary when you're traveling as well so it is very easy to forget things when you don't have a list if you're flying internationally you want to make sure that you have a passport because many countries need them once you have your passport in hand one thing that you should do is check the expiration date since time flies by so fast you definitely want to make sure that you check this expiration date because you could think that oh yeah it doesn't expire for five more years but it actually expires this year this is also important to know because some countries have passport validity rules for example, if your passport has less than three or six months before expiration, then maybe some countries won't allow you to enter. And these rules vary from country to country. Now, when it comes to packing, you must follow the golden rule, which is always to focus on your needs versus your wants. Do you need to pack 20 different shirts? five different pairs of jeans, eight different pairs of shoes. You may want to bring your whole closet with you on your next vacation, but one big issue that occurs is lack of space. You can only pack so many things. And one big reason for this is airline policy. So that's my next tip for you. There are so many rules surrounding luggage. How much luggage can you bring? What goes into your luggage? How much does your luggage weigh? And just so you know, for budgeting purposes, the more luggage that you bring can definitely increase how much you'll be paying. Just to give you an idea, here are some things that you actually can't have in your luggage according to the American Airlines website. You can't have fireworks, gunpowder, flares, or flare guns. Neither can you have bleach, spray starch, drain cleaners, solvents, or aerosols. Before I catch a flight, I always go to the website of the airline that I'm flying with so I know what is restricted and what is not restricted. I always like to bring a backpack as a carry-on because I can put my laptop in there and also some clothes so I'm not putting all my clothes in a check bag. This can also help you in situations where your flight gets delayed for many hours so you have an extra pair of clothes to change into. Bring a lightweight sweater or a jacket with you because when you are on a flight, they can be quite chilly. I also like to bring a small pack of tissues like this one just in case my nose is running a lot. When it's time to purchase some airline tickets, just know that you have a lot of choices. There are many websites and applications these days where you can buy airline tickets. There is Kayak, Skyscanner, Expedia, Booking.com, Priceline, and you can purchase tickets directly with an airline. I know this may seem quite overwhelming because there are so many options, but just do a little bit of research and try to figure out what are some of the pros and cons of using each of these. Not booking a flight directly with an airline can be a real pain. At the beginning of this year, I had a lot of problems with booking.com because I would purchase my tickets, but then I guess it didn't fully process, so they did take money out of my bank account, but then I was refunded, so I was really confused, and then I called them, and I was told that I just had to purchase a ticket again because they didn't have any insight into why the payment didn't actually fully go through. So I just ended up going directly to the American Airlines website and purchasing a ticket from there. Now, I don't say this to discourage you, but it's something that you can keep in mind. I've used other websites like Expedia and Kayak and I haven't had any issues at all. So it always goes back to the pros and cons and doing research. Save money by buying a package deal. When you're on these websites and you are buying your flight tickets, then you may receive an offer to not only buy a ticket for your flight, but also to include a hotel so you can save some money. Or maybe you'll see a package for hotel, flight, and transportation. However, it is possible that this package price that you are receiving is actually higher than if you were to just buy your flight ticket, hotel, and transportation separately. So again, do 
your research. <laughs> Understand the restrictions of the different classes of an airplane. There can be big differences in between the different classes, especially when it comes to how much you'll be paying. For example, flying basic economy versus cabin or first class. So with basic economy, you can have restrictions such as no changes allowed. You have to pay if you want to be able to choose where you want to sit. You have to pay for a check bag and even board with the last group. Understand that there are different types of flights. You can have a direct flight to your location or sometimes you may have a connecting flight. So let's say you're going to Mexico City from Dallas. Maybe you would just go from Dallas to Mexico City or you would have to fly to Miami first and then to Mexico City. Also, if you do have a connecting flight, you will want to make sure when it is going to be flying out. Sometimes when you land and you get to your next airport, you may only have 15 or 20 minutes to catch your next flight. Or maybe you have to wait an hour or two hours or even longer before this next flight takes off. Now, when it comes to booking your hotel, always make sure that you know exactly what is included in your reservation. Does your room or rooms come with a safe? Some hotels that I've stayed in have had them and others have not. Do you get access to a gym? Do you get a balcony? Does your reservation include breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or does it only include breakfast? This can make a huge difference if there are not many restaurants near your hotel. Remember that you are not restricted to only staying at a hotel. You can stay at resorts, an Airbnb, a hostel, and each of these can offer different amenities. There are a lot of options. Find out what the cancellation policy is. With many of the hotels that I've stayed at, you can cancel your reservation within 24 hours. But not every single one is exactly the same. Find out when is your check-in time and when your check-out time is. This is very important for planning your flights and your transportation. For example, some of the hotels that I've stayed at have a check-in time of 2 p.m. So I would make sure that my flight usually gets there at 2 or before 2 p.m. just so I can have a full day there. And I should add starting from 2 p.m. because this used to confuse me a lot because it was only or the check-in time was only starting from 2 p.m. and not prior. And that's because before 2 p.m. they were getting the room ready. So let's say that your checkout time is 12 p.m. Well, that means that you actually have to be checked out by that time. So again, maybe you would be waiting at the airport for five, six hours, depending on when your flight is, or you could book an earlier flight so you are not waiting such a long time at the airport. Before you get to the airport, there are a few more things that I would recommend you do. Call your bank. I always like to notify my bank of my travel itinerary for fraud purposes so they don't block my accounts because they're starting to see these purchases from a completely different state or a completely different country. Of course, check your bank policies because some banks may not even require any of this information. Call your cell phone company. This is especially important for those who are going to be traveling internationally and you want to know whether you are going to have data or not. Do you have unlimited calling and texting or are you going to have to pay for every minute or whatever it is? Look up different places where you can have currency exchanged. Maybe instead of only using your credit card in Mexico, you want to use Mexican pesos. You can do this at a bank in the city that you live in. You could get some pesos at the airport at some kiosk before you actually get to Mexico, or you could get it at a kiosk in Mexico at the airport or at a bank in Mexico. I mentioned all of these places because you could be paying a different amount depending on how much of a fee that you would have to pay for doing this exchange. When the day has come to finally head to the airport, make sure you get to the airport early. The main reason for this is so you don't have to rush when you're at the airport because that is just really stressful. The process of just getting to the airport and then when you're actually there, checking in and then going through security and then walking to your gate can take quite a long time. I like to arrive at least two to three hours before my flight actually leaves. And sometimes the websites or the airline websites actually give you a recommended time for when you should be arriving at the airport as well. 
make a physical copy of your travel itinerary and your boarding pass. This is just in case your phone runs out of battery and you don't have access to those documents. So this is why I always make sure I print out these things because I know that I'm usually on my phone a lot, right? I'm talking to family members, I'm talking to friends, uh, maybe I'm on Uber because that's what I'm using for transportation to the airport, I'm on bookie.com, so my phone is definitely draining a lot of battery. And then you won't have to put yourself in that position where you have to wait 10 to 15 minutes to have enough battery before you can actually check in or before you can go through security or something like that just so you can show your documents. Always check the departure time of your flight because departure times can change pretty unexpectedly and they can change many times. Oh yeah, the gate that you're supposed to fly out can also change as well. Thankfully, around airports, you will see many different boards that have all the departure times for the different flights so you can see if it has been delayed or if it even has been canceled. Do your best to stay patient. When it comes to traveling and being at the airport and going through that whole process, there are many things that just aren't in our control. Delays and cancellations can happen like I just mentioned, and you can't rush anything. For example, let's say that you're flying to Miami, but in Miami there is some bad weather. So your flight ends up being delayed for three hours or even four hours. I understand that this is not what you want to hear at all, but it's just one of those things. You just have to accept it, be patient so you don't overly stress yourself out because there are so many other things that you still have to keep track of right during your vacation. So just try to be as patient as possible and roll with the punches. The next tip that I have for you is to expect the worst. So I know this sounds very negative, but really it's not about being negative, but it's just about accepting what may happen to you. And thinking like this can help you plan for the worst situations. For example, many of my flights have been canceled and they have been delayed. So now I come up with plan B and plan C for when these different situations occur. Eat a big breakfast before you go to the airport because honestly the prices at a lot of airports are absolutely insane. Or bring some snacks with you. When you are at the airport and you have questions, ask them. There is no shame at all and you shouldn't feel embarrassed if you have to ask a question because that could prevent you from missing a flight, it could prevent you from paying extra money, and many other things. The workers at the airport are there to help you. When you are on your flight, make sure that you listen to the pilots and to the attendants. They as well can give you a lot of information about the flight that you're on. For example, a lot of emergency procedures and if there is going to be weather when you are flying. So you'll be notified if there is a lot of turbulence and then those are the moments when you won't be walking in the aisle but you'll be seated and buckled up. If you didn't know, you can now become a member of this channel. And if you want to know what type of perks that you'll receive as a member, check out the join link in the description box of this video. Now watch this video about me speaking only Spanish in Mexico.